Great. So let's go back to Einstein. The, um, Einstein had this cosmological term. He said, I, with my biggest blunder, I want to throw it out, get rid of it. But the problem is you can't get rid of it so easily. Because using the miracle of modern mathematics, you can rewrite that equation. And um, now this is, this is a small step for a mathematician, but a giant leap for a physicist. Not because it's that hard to put this term over there. Most of us could do that. But because it now represents something very different when it's on this side of the equations. Here it was somehow a geometric quantity. When it's here, it looks like a new contribution of the energy and momentum of the universe. What could contribute a term like this? And we know the answer. Nothing. By nothing, I don't mean nothing, I mean nothing. If you take empty space, and that means get rid of all the particles, all the radiation, absolutely everything. So there's nothing there. If that nothing weighs something, then it contributes a term like this. Now, that sounds ridiculous. Why should nothing weigh something? Nothing is nothing. And the answer is nothing isn't nothing anymore in physics. Because of the laws of quantum mechanics and special relativity, on extremely small scales, nothing is really a boiling, bubbling brew of virtual particles that are popping in and out of existence in a time scale so short you can't see them. Now again, that sounds like philosophy, like counting the number of angels on the head of a pin, or religion, or something useless. I shouldn't say, Dan Dennett is here, I shouldn't say philosophy is useless, but um, <laughs> anyway, um, he's also a friend. But, uh, the point is, it, we can't measure virtual particles directly, but we can measure their effects indirectly. And in fact, they're responsible for the best predictions in physics. Here, by the way, is actually a, 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 an animation that was shown at the Nobel Prize ceremonies about five years ago by a friend of mine who happened to win the Nobel Prize for, for developing the theory that produced this. This is the space inside of a proton, the empty space inside of a proton. Not where the quarks are, but the empty space between the quarks. And this is, not a, this is an animation, but it's an exact animation coming from physical calculations. This is what the space looks like. Now, how do we know that? Well, there are a lot of reasons, but one of the things are, it turns out most of the mass of the proton comes not from the quarks within a proton, but from the empty space between the quarks. These fields popping in and out of existence produce about 90% of the mass of a proton. And since protons and neutrons are the dominant stuff in your body, the empty space is responsible for 90% of your mass. So these empty space is vital to science and these calculations are vital to understanding not just protons but electrons and atoms and produce the best comparisons, the, and I will repeat this, the best comparisons between theory and experiment in all of science. To 10 decimal places in quantum electrodynamics using these calculations we can get the right answer. It's amazing. So, 